Hello there and welcome to part 4 of this tutorial series in which we're going to create the functions that your bot can later on use to interact with tweets. Now let's take a look at the structure of Twitter um, and actually how we can get access to a certain tweet and how this actually works in the background. So on your homepage uh, there are tweets that, um, that you see based on certain criteria and for every tweet there's the option to reply, retweet or favorite or like. So these are the three options that are available and every tweet, so for example once we have that opened, has its own unique tweet ID. And this is very important as this is how we're going to access the tweet using the API with the intention to either like or favorite, retweet and or reply to a certain tweet with a certain message. Now we would need to extract this um, as this, this is a tutorial only to setting up the functions, we're going to just copy this one. But of course, later on, you we would like to have, um, and that's some coming in the next tutorial, scraping this information from Twitter based on certain criteria. So for example, you might want to search for Python programming. Um, and then once you get, for example, the first tweet, you might decide to whether favorite or retweet based on these criteria. So for example, if there are over a thousand likes or favorites, then favorite the tweet. Or if the user has over a thousand followers, retweet the tweet. So these are all the criteria that we're going to cover in the next uh, video. But for now, we need to set these functions that so they're ready and we can use them. So as mentioned, the functions would be to um, favorite, retweet or reply to a certain tweet. So let's start with the most simple one, although they're all quite simple, but uh, favoriting. Define favorite, as mentioned, we would need tweet ID. And this needs to be a string. Um, I'm not sure if uh, based on the um, scraping you, it would be a string or not, but we can easily solve that here. API.create underscore favorite. And then here we can convert it to string. And this is actually all that we need to favorite a certain tweet. Um, let's test it. So favorite, and then uh, as mentioned, this one, the tweet ID, I'll copy. And what I would expect is after this uh, file has run, that this heart would turn red. So let's just make sure that it works. Refresh, and there it is. So we have favorited a tweet. Now let's try to retweet define retweet again we need a certain tweet id api dot here it's not create retweet but just retweet retweet and then again we will need to pass so in this case it would be string of tweet underscore id and then we're going to run this function retweet and then pass the tweet id and once we do that if we go back, we will see that this is now retweeted. And if we go to our profile, then it should appear here. So fairly simple, but these are functions that we would uh, really need to have in place before we move to the next part. Now we can do the opposite. So not favorite, but define unfavorite. And again, we need a certain tweet ID. Before we had create favorite, now we would have destroy favorite and then again string, string of the tweet ID. So unfavorite and then we can pass the tweet ID the same way we did before. Oh. And of course, the destroy should be properly spelled. Now if you go back, this red heart should disappear seems to be the case, so that's good. And um, the last part is on retweet before we move to the reply part, which is a bit more complex. Not that complex, but still. On a retweet, we need again the tweet id api.onRetweet string of the tweet id. On retweet, retweet and that should be fine. So let's go back. And if you refresh, 
it's no longer retweeted. Now there are a few um, replies here. Let's try to reply um, again. Now, how reply works is, um, as you can see, all these replies have, for example, at WCJ, in this case, the Wall Street Journal. So what we need to do is we need to have that handle first. So we need to extract it somehow. Now let's go back and create our define reply function. Let's start with this. We would still need to get a certain tweet ID and there would be, of course, a certain message that uh, we would like to uh, tweet back, right? So this would be the message. So we would get a certain tweet and we need to go a bit one step back. So we need to extract everything for a certain tweet based on the ID. And we can do that by using api.get status and then string of the tweet ID. So what do we have here as part of this tweet? Well, let's take a look into that. So reply, we're not replying yet, but let's take a look at what are the information that we get back. Oh, it should be print tweet. So there are 141 lines, so it's a lot of information, but for example, we can see when was the tweet posted, the tweet ID, which we already know, uh, we see that the, the same ID is already converted, there's the tweet text. Um, what we're actually interested in is the screen name, or this WCJ, so we can actually reply directly to the person who posted this tweet. And of course, this would um, change based on the tweet, but it's something that we that would remain the, the same in terms of the parameter that we need. So in this case, we would need the screen underscore name. So our uh, screen name or username, we can also have that, would be equal to tweet.user.screen underscore name. Now let's print that username and it should be WCJ, so only the, the correct handle, the Twitter handle. Now, before in the previous one of the previous tutorials, we saw that we can easily post a tweet by updating status. And uh, this is actually the same. So for example, uh, posting a tweet is, is not, uh, posting a reply is not that much different than posting a, a tweet. It's still a tweet, except it's towards a certain person. It starts and, and a certain tweet. So what we need to do is reply would be equal to api.update status. And here we would start with f at username. So we're going to post to a certain username, then an empty space as we want to have a space before our message starts, and then the message. Now, all of this would be um, linked to a certain tweet ID, and that is actually something that we've already mentioned. Um, and here I think we can also have a like string of tweet ID. I'm not sure it would work without it, but let's say, let's see. It would be fine actually, regardless of this, let's leave it, let's leave it like that. So here what we're saying is, this is the tweet ID, and I would like to uh, send the following message or reply the following message. Test not really an important reply. So we would like to um, update the status at the username and what the username is actually extracted from the tweet. And we would like to um, reply this message and it should be linked to this tweet. So let's reply and let's go back and see if this works. Um, right, refresh. There we go. Here's the actual the, the reply that uh, we've just posted. So replying to WCJ. So that was the first part of our function. Then an empty space and then our message actually starts. And it is related to this tweet. So it's re being uh, recorded as a reply to this original tweet. So this is actually everything that we need at this stage. And uh, once we have this in place, we can continue with scraping data from tweet, from Twitter uh, and deciding based on certain criteria when to favorite, when to unfavorite, maybe follow users or whatever uh, we would like our bot to do. Uh, but this would be all regarding this tutorial.
Thank you for following as always. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below.